peace and blessings to the 12. Welcome to the Forefront Radio. Welcome to the Forefront Radio. I'm your host, Afia Levi. We're going to have this short live before we have our Discord uh, discussion on the Discord channel. Make sure you share the room with at least 10 people so more people can join in to this discussion that we're going to get into, which is the... Uh, the certain things that are in history that many people are not aware of, we're going to go into it and we're going to discuss it for the people that are in the room. Make sure you share the room with at least 10 people so that way they could join in on this discussion. All right. So we're going to get into a lot of history. Shalom to you. Hope you're doing all right. We encourage every single one of you to make sure you're following the Forefront Radio on Spotify iHeartRadio and many other platforms. We're going to have this quick discussion for about 45 minutes and then afterwards I'm going to hop on my Discord server and discuss the same thing with some of the brothers and sisters on Discord. So we're going to get into some of the atrocities that happened to our people and we're going to get into some of the culprits behind this thing because many people are not aware of these truths that I'm about to share with you. Okay. So there's a book called Chosen People of the Caucasus. There's a book called Chosen People of the Caucasus. And in this book, they get into the history of the relationship between the Yiddish people, you know, Revelation 2 and 9, Revelation 3 and 9, those kind of folks, right? And we're going to get into certain things that happen to our people and how these this information is hidden from the public. Many people don't know the relationship between the uh, Yiddish people and the Chosen Ones, being Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, that they stole their identity, renamed themselves Yiddish with a, a J, and called themselves the people of the Bible. When in reality, when you read the Bible, the Bible says that the Hebrews are melanated people. Watch this. Today, a large number of black Americans think of the Jewish as people of the book, and they look more favorably on them than other Caucasoidals. These poorly informed blacks do not know that the Jews of Europe played the same role in their enslavement, oppression, and colonization as other Europeans. This is a book in the forward section. The book is called Chosen People from the Caucasus. This book is going to make people's head shake. It's going to change people's minds and challenge a certain viewpoint that has been pushed on the earth. That viewpoint is that God is white, the angels are white, the uh, people that are invading in Northeast Africa, that they're the chosen people of the Bible, when in reality, that's not true. Let's read the quote again from the book called The Chosen People from the Caucasus. Watch this. Today, a large number of black Americans think of the Jewish, I'm going to just refer to it now as SOS, Synagogue of Satan, Revelation 2 and 9, those that say they are Hebrew and are not, as the people of the book. And they look more favorably to them than other Caucasoidals. These poorly informed blacks do not know that the Jews of Europe played the same role, the same role in their enslavement, oppression, and colonization as other Europeans. That's showing you, y'all, that the people that call themselves Polish, Yiddish, that took over the region of Northeast Africa, they're actually not the people of the Bible, y'all. Watch this. Here's another quote from the book. It says, as financiers and insurers of European maritime commerce, a commerce largely focused on the slave trade for three centuries, Jewish, Jewish mercantile houses amass vast fortunes in both Europe and North America. Fortunes that were often interrelated by family and marital times. In Europe, conversos operating out of Madrid and Seville handled the business of Spanish slaving. 
use openly operating in Amsterdam served the financial needs of Protestant slavers. In America, a flourishing you wish financial community centered mainly in Newport, Rhode Island, financed and insured slaving voyages by Yankee captains. You hear that, ladies and gentlemen? Why did they never teach this to you in school? Why did they never teach you that the people groups known as the Ashkenazi, the Yiddish, the Jewish, the Polish, the descendants of Europe that converted to a religion, why did they never tell you that they enslaved God's chosen people and they were a part of the majority that took on the identity of black people from the Bible? Okay. They are the majority that took the identity of black people in the Bible. You can't make this stuff up. You can't make this stuff up, y'all. Welcome to the Forefront Radio. Please put a one in the chat if you can hear the audio clearly. Please put a one in the chat. I want to make sure everyone can hear this information clear. So we're seeing here that according to this book, the people that call themselves Polish, Yiddish, they were the ones that financed the slave trade, which was the greatest atrocity to happen on the planet. And they have hidden themselves from sharing this information in books. They have hidden themselves by, by trying to relate to the people that they're God's chosen people, when in fact, many of them are atheists. Many of them converted to a religion and not the Bible. Many of them converted to a religion and they are not bloodline descendants of the people of the Bible. Watch this. This is another quote from the book called Chosen People of the Caucasus. It says, whatever the truth about Columbus personally, there is no doubt that yous and you wish money were heavenly, were heavily committed to the transatlantic voyage. Even more relevant is the fact that yous formed a considerable proportion of the Spanish settlers and conquistadors who came to the new world. Hold up, wait a minute, hold on, wait a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, you just found out that the people that say they are Hebrew and are not, these groups that say they are Hebrew and are not, they literally, listen to what I'm saying, they literally were involved during the same time period of Christopher Columbus and the invasion of America. The invasion of America. Y'all know that America was com comprised of melanated people, right? You know, the people that they call Negro and Native American used to be the same, right? The Aborigine. That, and it's interesting to me because you'll refer to Australian as Aborigine, but the melanated people in America, you just say they're just black. Hmm. Like Native indigenous peoples weren't melanated to begin with. And they call them Indian when in reality, they were the descendants of the Israelites. I literally have books, y'all, where in the books, it describes some of the same practices of black people from ancient America and showing that these black groups in America did the same practices that you could read in the Bible. Meaning what? The Feast of First Fruits, that's in the Bible. They had harvest festivals. The native indigenous people had harvest festivals, just like the Israelites in the Bible. Meaning what? They're, the, they're one and the same. I have a book that literally says that black people in ancient America, prior to enslavement and prior to colonization, were celebrating the Passover. How could they celebrate a biblical based custom if they were not Israelites. Thank you, Queenie, for subscribing. Most high in Christ bless to you. How could they be celebrating a Hebraic practice? Nobody's answered that question for me. How could black people be 
participating in Hebraic customs in ancient America if they were not the people of the Bible. And then they, they watch this, watch this, watch this. The point of all this, meaning the main point that we want to focus on, is that we now come to an issue not presented in any popular history of the Yiddish people or any of the numerous books of anti Shem 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 ism. Not a whisper or reference to it has entered our public school system. Not a whisper has entered into our public school system. And it is simply that yous, that yous were major participants, were major participants in the unalive and deletion of American Indians as quote unquote conquistadors. As quote unquote conquistadors, meaning what? Many of the people that came to America with Christopher Columbus were Yiddish people, the converts to religion and not the bloodline descendants. Thank you, uh, Chris, for following the forefront. We appreciate you for joining up and being a member of the forefront on TikTok. So it says, and were major participants in the greatest human tragedy his history knows. No, not Adolf's H H H H H course, but the transatlantic war against indigenous melanated people. Watch this. Watch this. It says, now this must be the case because it was the conquistadors who first unalive or deleted and made captive the American Indians during the first century of colonialism. Before this first history, I'm sorry, before the first century of exploitation was half over, the supply of Amera Indians had already gotten scarce in some places. Then the idea of importing black Africans in large quantities to replace them was conceived. Yeah, it wasn't conceived. It was doctored by the Roman Catholic Church. Meaning the Roman Catholic Church was the one that authorized the enslavement of all black Shemite people. Y'all understand that? The Roman Catholic system was involved with conversos, which were the religious zealots of the Inquisition that quote unquote converted many of these Yiddish people to Catholicism. And these newly convert conversos went with Christopher Columbus to the Americas, meaning what? They knew who they put in captivity. They knew that the original Hebrews were melanated people. They knew that for a fact, y'all. They literally knew that for a fact. So what happened? What happened to the original people? They got renamed and reclassified. That's why the term Negro is a Spanish word, meaning what? The colonizer, the conquistadors, renamed the Israelites as these uh, derogatory terms that are uh, censored on the Internet now. OK, watch this. It says, Yous were well represented among the conquistadors, if not an actual majority of the first waves of them, since Yous virtually controlled the administrative and financial aspects of European maritime commerce. The conclusion is inescapable that Yous must have had a large and profitable role in New World deletion, 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 and captivity, captivity, captivity. Okay? So this is telling us that the people that are over in the land of Northeast Africa originally were not the people of the Bible. The people of the Bible, when you read the Bible, it compares them to melanated Ethiopians, 
Meaning what? The original Hebrews, when you read the Bible, they are melanated with afros and woolly hair. As a matter of fact, when you visit places like Russia, Vladimir and his cohorts and all the Orthodox church folk, they literally have monuments, shrines, temples, churches, artifacts, full of history depicting Miriam, depicting the Messiah, depicting Peter, Paul as brown people, y'all. As brown people, y'all. You can't make this stuff up. That's what's going on. Uh, I'm not inviting people to come to me now because I want to make sure I focus on the study without distractions. So feel free to listen in while we have this discussion in regards to this information that is well hidden. This is well hidden information. Watch this. There is no way, this is the same book uh, quote from the book, which is chosen people from the Caucasus. It says, there is no way to estimate the number of victims. Reasonable estimates suggest that from 10 to 15 million Indians and Africans unalived in enslavement. But some estimates range as high, as high, as high as over 100 million victims. Y'all see that? 100 million. So you compare your 6 million in Europe to 100 million 100 million compared to six. That means barely 10% out of the people that are Polish comparatively to the Indians and black people in America that were deleted in America. 100 million. The math is mathing now. You can no longer deceive us now. We have history books proving that the people that call themselves Polish, Yiddish, Ashkenazish, ish, 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 because they, they full of ish, these people are not the original. They're the carbon copy. They're, they're the, uh, what you call, the GMO version, okay? Just like, just like when you uh, go to the store and you want the real organic food and you, you somehow can't find it, how can an entire group of people be called the lost tribes of Israel? How can an entire group of people disappear, but then all of a sudden a religious group pops up and they're like, oh, uh, here they are. They're these uh, uh, Caucasian folk over here. No, no, that's a lie. That's a lie. You understand? Because when the when you read the Bible, the Bible says that the children of Israel would be scattered into all nations via enslavement, via captivity, via slavery. Who did that happen to? Did that happen to the Chinese? No. Did that happen to the Arabs? No. Did that happen to the people that call themselves Jewish? No. So what group of mankind on the earth, as the Bible describes, went into slavery in all nations? In all nations. Sister Queenie said it right. My black ancestors. Exactly. Exactly. This is why we're calling it the greatest HHHH course on the earth. Because nothing can compare to what happened to the melanated people on the earth compared to the people that claim a religion. Y'all understand that? There's a difference between people. That's like people that are Christian now telling you that they're the original people of the Bible. Makes no sense. We know that the people of the Bible were enslaved in Egypt. That's in Africa. They were enslaved in Mesopotamia, in Persia. In Ethiopia, by the Babylonians. Babylonians had power all the way from Africa to India. But people are just ignore this history and they're like, oh, the people that are uh, the people of the Bible, they're the same group that, uh, uh, you know, converted to, to this religion in the 6th, 7th and 8th uh, century and the descendants of the Herodian Edomites. Come on, man. So now we have another book. We have another book called The Fate of the Ewes, a people turn between 
Israeli Power and Jewish Ethics. So now listen to this book. It says, according to Rabbi Korn's meticulously documented research on Jewish and Southern slavery, only one you ever worked as an overseer, but possibly a greater proportion of yous than Christians were slave owners, slave owners, slave owners. Why is that important? You got a bunch of black people crying over what's happening in Northeast Africa, right? Saying, oh, it's bad. It's bad what happened to the people in Israel. And they don't realize they're the bloodline descendants of the children of Israel. And more of those people that converted to a religion based on Afro-Hebraic practices now are, are like, uh, now we're finding out that they were the greatest contributors to the slave trade. That's literally what we're reading in the books. But they hide this from y'all. If you want to hide something from people, put it in a book. If you want to hide something from people, place it in a book because many of you would rather watch a TikTok video than read a book. Now we're reading a book on TikTok just for you to go back and research it for yourself. Just like the sister put in a comment, because the truth matters. Exactly. Because the truth matters. Good, good, very insightful statement. Because the truth always matters. We're not here about feelings and suppositions and opinions. We're about truth. So now let's continue in this book called The Fate of the Jews, a people torn between Israeli power, that's Zionism, versus Jewish ethics. Watch this. Just as a disproportionately large number of Jews were slave owners, let me repeat it again, just as a disproportionately large number of Jews were slave owners, a disproportionately large number of Jewish merchants sold slaves as they would any other goods. Several of these merchants were prominent in their communities as acting rabbis, as presidents of their congregation. You can't make this stuff up, y'all. She had a room with at least 10 people. You can't make this stuff up. Literally in this book, it says that these Jewish people were large participants in the slave trade. And not only that, it was the religious teachers. It was the religious leaders that that enslaved the children of Israel, reclassified them as black, Hispanic, Native Americans, retook their name. This is identity theft to the max, y'all, and said, oh, we're the chosen people of God. But yet they reject Christ. They reject the Messiah and they don't even believe in the Bible. And half of them are atheists. How can people that follow secular humanism that don't even believe in the God of the Bible proclaim themselves to be the people of the Bible. When in fact, most black people are the most religious people all over the planet. Most melanated people are the most religious people on the planet. But yet you turn around and say, no, 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 no. It's not the people that are always praying and singing and they have choirs where they're singing praises to the God of the Bible. It can't be them. Let it be the people that are the bankers and the politicians and the rabbis and the uh, uh, rulers over the entertainment world that is pushing debauchery on the earth. Make it make sense. Why does why does a rabbi own pornography sites on the Internet? Make it make sense. Why is it that we're reading that a rabbi is responsible for enslaving people? Doesn't the Bible say thou shall not steal? Doesn't the Bible say thou shall not delete and enslave people? Last time I checked, when you read Exodus chapter 21, 16, it says he that steals a man and sells him, the same should be deleted. The same should be unalived. What Bible are they reading? The Bible says that one should not enslave someone and unalive them. But this is what happened during the transatlantic war. But now we're supposed to ignore history when their own books 
written by their own teachers tell you that they were involved with the trade in itself. And I don't like using the word trade because it was a war across the planet. It was a war across the planet. It wasn't a trade. Nobody was nobody was saying, hey, I'm going to give you these human beings for free and you can go and do whatever the heck you want with them. No, that was a war. They came with weapons. They came with pew, 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 boom, 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 snatch, snatch. That's what they came with. OK, that's what they came with. And all nations on the earth participated in it, including Jewish people, including Yiddish people. So they try to fake the funk and say, oh, we helped to 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 free you. No, you did not. No, you do not. During the American Revolution, it was Yiddish people fighting with the South against the North to keep black people in chains. Watch this. This is from the book. Yous were traitors and masters. Yous were traitors and masters. Blacks were merchandise and enslaved and servants. In America, there is no record of a black who traded in use or a black who owned use. I doubt there are any black housewives either that know this. You see? So in this quote that we're reading from this historical book, we're finding out that the people that call themselves Yiddish, Ashkenazi, were actually involved with enslaving the children of Israel and they took over their identity. Watch this. This was particularly true of the South before the Civil War. Not only were a disproportionate number of Jewish slave owners, slave traders, and slave auctioneers, but when the line was drawn between races, they were on the side of the Caucasians. You see that? You see that? So, so this is according to a book, watch this, in American Yuri and the Civil War, Rabbi Bertrand Korn quoted Oscar Strauss, who recalled how well his father, a peddler, was treated by plantation owners. Strauss said the reason was race, which gave even you a Jewish peddler a status of equality that probably otherwise he would not have enjoyed to such a degree. Meaning what? Because they were non-melanated, palm-colored people, the Krabby Patty, the Red Lobster, they all worked together. And the one that was converted to the religion and not actual bloodline descendants took the people and enslaved them. Watch this. Why is it that in the schools known as Harvard and Yale University, that they have shipping manifest and many names of the descendants of the people that were enslaved have Hebraic names like Yeremiah, like Yanu, like Nehemiah, like Banya, like Kuya. Why do they have Hebrews name like Hallelujah? Why do they have Hebrew names? Even to this day, marinated in the names of black people, you find Hebraic names. Explain this to me. Why was it that during World War II it and prior to World War II, Germany had melanated people in camps working before, before the... Uh, the National Society of Germanic People with the red flag and they were, you know, uh, suffering from Eurocentric delusionalism before those jokers started saying, we're going to address these Europeans that are faking the funk. But you don't hear about Namibia, the German colony. You don't hear nothing about Namibia and the concentration camps there. Oops, I said a bad word. Concentration camps. Huh. TikTok. So 
What you're learning, ladies and gentlemen, is that in America, they set up plantation systems and the people that were owning the plantation systems were you wish people. You wish people. Uh oh. You didn't learn that in church. Uh oh. You didn't learn that in school. Uh oh. You didn't learn that in university. But now they got black people crying for these people that are literally going overseas using weaponry to invade other people's lands. And saying that we're the originators. Come on, man. When are we going to stop falling for Eurocentric delusionalism? When are we going to stop falling for people groups invading other lands and then claiming themselves to be the original? You got to call their card, man. You paid all that money to go to college and university and they taught you lies. Eurocentric delusionalists went all throughout the world, invaded every land, and retitled themselves to hide their true identity. According to the Bible, they are Edom, Esau, Idumeans, the descendants of the Greco-Romans. But guess what? There is a God. There is a God. And he is the God of the Israelites. He is the God of blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. He is the God of the oppressed. Because the Bible says, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for the Lord has sent me to set liberty or freedom to the captives or the slaves and the opening of the prison to them that are in bondage. What other group of people are suffering from mass incarceration, slavery, and oppression? If you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. Thank you for listening to the Forefront Radio. We appreciate you listening to this TikTok Live. This episode will broadcast later on on the uh, Forefront Radio 2 on YouTube. Thank you so much for listening. Peace and blessings to the 12.